what? Scarfing Timberwolves. Happy May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. This week we're going to do themed recipes all around Star Wars. Now, if you are not in Star Wars, trust me, these recipes are still really, really tasty. Um, so you can still make them. But I had to really go with this theme. I've got my Princess Leia buns going on. It's not great, but it's happening. Um, and I've got some decorations behind me that my kids did. And then I've got some little helpers as well that we made this week. Okay. Um, but these recipes are awesome. And for this recipe, for this demo, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make churros. And it's awesome. It's the recipe that's from the Disney Parks um, website. They actually put out what the recipe was for their churros. And it's amazing. Now... For this recipe, you are going to have to watch because we are going to be frying these churros. And anytime that we deal with oil on the stove top, we always have to take precautions that we don't burn ourselves because burning ourselves with oil hurts so badly, okay? So come along with me on this one. Again, please make sure that you've got your parents around just in case. This is one of those recipes that you definitely do need to make sure that they're there with you because we are frying and we are cooking on the stove top. Um, and you wanna make sure that you've got the right tools for this, okay? So for this, for equipment wise, um, I'm gonna make sure that I've got a pretty medium size, like a good size sauce pot that I'm gonna be mixing my dough together in. And then it says a skillet. So for my skillet, I'm actually gonna use a deep frying pan. And it's gonna be, this one I think is about 12 inches. Um, I would recommend that you do one that is like a little bit bigger, but it has to be deep, okay? Please, please, please make sure that your frying pan isn't too shallow because you need to be able to put enough oil in here for it to fry, okay? Um, we will be using 375 milliliters of oil, which isn't too bad, but it is quite a bit of oil, all right? So what you want to might want to make sure you have is some sort of container to pour the oil in afterwards um, to get rid of it, okay? But... This recipe is delicious. I do not think these churros will last long. Um, and yeah, let's me the fourth it up. Okay, so very first thing I'm gonna do is show you the recipe and I will wash my hands and then we're gonna get going. Okay, so it does say that it yields about 12, but I think last time I did this, I made about 20. It really depends on the size of um, churros that you end up making. Um, it also calls for a piping bag. I instead am going to use a large Ziploc, works just as well, okay? Um, but I would recommend kitchen scissors, so scissors that are heavy duty. If you do not have kitchen scissors, grab a pair of sharp scissors, um, wash them off first, hand sanitize, Okay, uh, because you will need them for this one, okay? So, wash my hands first. Wait till I get hot water. Team might be a really good time for you to, you know, start watching them. Um, I think there's like eight of them now. Uh, we are working through them with my own kids, which is great. And this recipe can be made gluten-free, but you do need margarine or some sort of, uh, I use lactose-free butter for myself. Um, you do need that for this recipe, okay? So what it's going to call for is water, butter, salt and cinnamon all in the saucepan and I'm not going to start heating it up until I have all my ingredients in there and I'm ready to go. I think a lot of people end up heating up their saucepan first and that's when you can get burnt items, that's when you can burn your butter um, and it can actually become really dangerous. So let's take a look at 125 on this one. And there really is no way to kind of make this low fat. Churros aren't supposed to be low fat. They are delicious. All right, so I have my butter. I am gonna get my water, but first I'm gonna add in my dry ingredients. So salt and cinnamon. I've got 
one milliliter of salt. I'm gonna heat my blob of the butter. I am also using salted butter. I actually don't find it too salty with the one milliliter of salt and salted butter. So you can totally do that. If you do not have salted butter, you might even be able to add in two milliliters of salt. But again, I bake with salt, I uh, cook with salt, so we are a salt eating family, okay? So for the cinnamon, I am gonna put in my um, two milliliters because I'm gonna be putting in my other amount in my cinnamon sugar. So I'm gonna grab my one again. Thank you. And I'm gonna add water to this. So 250 is what I need. It doesn't really matter on the temperature. Go level, flat surface, dip down for the meniscus, and actually that is exactly 250. <laughs> so I'll pour this in. So I will be mixing this with my trusted wooden spoon because again, I don't want to do metal on metal, so I will be doing this. And I'm gonna bring it over to my stove top and then get myself ready before I start heating this. And I just realized I'm gonna have to take this lightsaber off because I need some eggs. So once you start to make this recipe, it actually comes together really, really fast. So I just want to make sure that I'm ready to roll with all of my stuff. that once I start cooking, I'm good. There is a resting period of about five to seven minutes. Um, so I'll be able to set some stuff up there and measure my salt and my, or my sugar and my uh, cinnamon, but I just want to make sure that I'm prepared. Okay, so I'm going to start heating this up onto medium heat. Again, I do not put my stove up onto high. I will eventually um, when I start to really cook this, but I always want to start my heating process on medium um, and then either work my way up or work my way down. Okay, and that's just a safety thing with my stove top. So your recipe is going to call um, for bringing this to a boil and then reducing it to a simmer. Okay, um, for this recipe, you do want it to be boiling all over and I'll uh, show you what it looks like. Um, you might even call it like a rolling boil. Uh, which means that you've got bubbles and you've got it heated all the way through and not just like little tiny ones like bigger bubbles that are popping and stuff. So since you are going to have that, please watch out for splatter. And I'll talk to you guys about that when we actually start to fry um, because your oil might um, pop when it starts to heat and when it splatters, it can get really, really dangerous. Okay. But again, um, frying doesn't have to be scary. It's, it's, it's usually if you kind of follow your safety um, techniques to make sure that your hands aren't too close to your face or too close, um, frying is actually really awesome. It's a little juicy, but it tastes really good, okay? So my butter is starting to melt. Uh, I'm just gonna give this a stir. But I'm gonna kind of let it do its thing, okay? I don't need to over stir this. I don't need to over mix it. Um, basically, I just need to heat it up. So I think I've almost reached my temperature. I've got a gas stove, so it heats up stuff really, really quickly. So I'm actually going to increase my heat to just above medium, um, which would be about a six right about now. I don't typically go over an eight, um, even if I am uh, doing like pasta or anything like that. Eight is usually my highest, so that's about um, like closer to high temperature if you have one of those stove tops. Um, but yeah, I, I, and again, I start at medium and then gradually increase. Okay. My butter is starting to melt. And again, I'm going to watch it and make sure that I'm here and I'm ready for it. Um, in the meantime, if you wanted to make sure that you've got your slotted spoon, because eventually you'll be using that, um, tongs, I will be using just because I find coating with tongs is much easier. Um, and then I've got my, um, paper towel.
towel in order to get some of my excess oil off of it. I've got my oil here too. Um, and then I've got my eggs. And then the other stuff I'm going to be adding are of course my flour. And I will be doing this gluten free so that I can actually enjoy. Um, and then I will be adding my sugar for my coating as well. So the actual churro dough by itself is pretty plain. Um, but the cinnamon sugar is really, is awesome. And then you can also dip it into other stuff. So some of you guys have been showing me that you guys like to add Nutella to stuff or caramel sauce or chocolate sauce or whatever. Um, you can add a whole bunch of stuff to this. This is pretty uh, flexible as far as um, being able to add different flavors, okay? Um, the other thing I've got is two plates, okay? So I will be putting this on here just to towel it off. And then I've got a serving plate that I'll be using too. Um, I made this recipe a couple days ago, again, just to remind myself. So I have my cinnamon sugar already mixed and you can save it um, because it's, I mean, it's already cooked and I just used it to um, kind of put my stuff in. But if you guys wanted to mix up your 125 of um, sugar and your three milliliters of cinnamon, you could. And I actually added an extra cinnamon because you guys know. All right, so this is starting to get into a really nice boil and as you can hear, okay, I do not want to burn it. All right, so I've turned it slightly down again. I'm just above medium. My butter is not completely melted. And again, I want to watch to make sure it doesn't burn. So if you start to smell it burn, don't think, oh, it'll be okay, okay? Scratch it, let it cool, get rid of it, and then start again. Okay, so if I let it sit, because all of my butter is now melted, if I let it sit, it should start to boil. So you can see all of those bubbles forming, okay? And they're all over and I can actually hear it. And that's a rolling boil, okay? So for me, what I'm gonna do is actually turn this off. I'm gonna get my flour ready and I'm gonna mix it in. So I will be doing 300 milliliters of flour so I can either do 650s or I could do a 250 and then a 50. So one, start with my wooden spoon. If you find that you are not comfortable with a wooden spoon, you can always stir it with a rubber spatula. You just need to make sure that your rubber spatula can handle heat. So you are going to start building this dough. Okay, and you, what you're going to want to do is just make sure that all of your flour is mixed in. Do not over mix because you don't want to over stretch that gluten. And we will be mixing in eggs too. My dough here, my batter, kind of looks funny and like mush. It does not smell great, but trust me, this will come together. All right, so in my recipe, it says to wait five to seven minutes to cool it down, okay? So I will let it sit off of the heat. And basically this is to allow the flour to actually cook. You should never eat raw flour, okay? <laughs> um, so we're putting in the flour, we're allowing it to cook, but we also need it to cool down because once we add the eggs, we wanna make sure that we don't pre-cook the eggs or else we're going to have scrambled eggs in with our churros and that's not a good thing. Okay. Um, so you do need to make sure you are waiting the five to seven minutes. 
um, because again, we don't want these eggs to uh, kind of split basically uh, and make for really weird eggs. Um, what I would recommend actually is uh, putting them in one at a time and mixing them. It's just a little bit easier. The other option you have is um, putting them all in, and breaking them all into a boil, um, making sure that you beat the eggs, okay, to uh, mix the yolk and the egg white and then pouring them in and again, stirring really fast. So you wanna make sure that you stir because this no matter like after the five to seven minutes, it won't be completely cooled down. And again, you don't wanna pre-cook your eggs, okay? Okay, so while I'm waiting for that to cool, I'm gonna get up my frying station and I'm gonna get that ready to go. white sugar and then three milliliters of cinnamon. I ended up putting in five milliliters of cinnamon. So good. I've got my tongs and I have my slotted spoon ready to go for the frying. So I'm going to pre-measure my oil. So for this oil, um, 375 is the max that you're going to need. So a lot of people assume that when you're frying, you want to be like a deep fryer, um, which soaks the item kind of in oil and you have this like deep vat or deep basket. Okay. Um, but actually when you're frying donuts or uh, you're using like an electric fryer, you always want to actually only go to halfway um, point on the item that you're frying and then flip it. If you go too much oil, so if you put in too much oil, what I'll end up doing is the item will actually soak in the oil and then it will taste like oil instead of tasting like being fried, if that makes sense. It'll saturate in the oil. Um, you also have to make sure that when you are um, frying, you have a good heat, okay? So I use a medium to medium to like just one above, so like a five or a six when I heat. I do not want to overheat the oil um, because that will end up browning the item way too fast. And then in the meantime, the actual item won't be cooked in the inside and you'll get like doughy stuff in the inside. Um, do not turn it up like super, super high again because you don't want to burn it. And again, it has to be hot enough so that the item itself doesn't like saturate in the oil in, before it cooks, okay? So we're actually going to end up doing a tester to make sure that our stovetop is ready to go and our, our fryer is ready to go um, before we start doing our churros. The other thing I'm gonna recommend is don't put like all 20 churros in there at one time. Um, you wanna be able to have just enough that you can scoop, do your padding, do your um, cinnamon sugar and do that. And so I usually recommend five, okay? Um, I might do a couple more just because I've done this recipe before, but when you're starting out, five is like the max, even though you'll have space. Um, and that's just to get into the flow. And what you could even do is the first two rounds just go for two, okay? Um, and also you never add uh, raw dough to uh, a session, okay? So you wanna make sure that if you've got two that you've put in there, um, you don't like wait 20 minutes and then add two more, okay? So fully cook them and then take them out and then put them on the plate, okay? Basic, all right? So I'm gonna get my 375 worth of oil. If you're using a smaller um, skillet or frying pan, um, you're kind of looking at about an inch worth of oil at the bottom, okay? Um, you do not want to go too much. a lot of oil but this will end up heating up and cooking up and this is about what I want I don't want it to be really really deep okay I just want my churros to be able to cook on both sides um, and yeah like I don't need a lot for it to be like really soaked in oil all right so I'm gonna start adding in my stuff a little bit more 
but I want to be able to do this video. So what I would recommend you do is uh, wait until you've got the five to seven minutes. It should cool down quite a bit. I'm going to take my eggs. I'm going to break them. So I'm going to be adding three eggs to this. So I am going to use my utility fork just to beat my eggs. Make a lovely sound. I'm so sorry. to make sure that my eggs don't separate and cook. So I do want to make sure that all of my eggs get mixed in. I don't have the separation going on between dough and egg. And it's going to look like a really funny dough, trust me. And again, it is not going to smell great. Once your eggs are fully mixed in there, you're not going to over mix it because you don't want your churros to be too dense. You are going to take your Ziploc bag or piping bag. You're going to fold it and then you're going to plop it in there. I'm actually going to turn on my frying pan so that ready. And again, medium heat. Take this out. And I want to get all of this. So that cleaning is way easier. all the churros. And I'm actually going to soak this in hot water. I've got my dough, okay, or my butter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to shift it down to one side, okay, because you're gonna be using this tip here instead of a piping bag, basically. Um, and what I wanna do is try to get out as much air from possible out of this bag. Close it pretty much like 95% of the way. 
Okay. And then I'm basically going to take it between my thumb and my first finger and I'm going to twist it. Okay. And this is how I am going to pipe it out. All right. So if you have ever piped before, uh, like decorating and stuff like that, this is typically how you do it. And then you just squeeze. Okay. Um, so I am going to do this and it should be like, you should be able to touch this. This is just warm. Okay. It's fine. Um, and you should be able to then squeeze this out. So I'm not going to do open this until I'm ready to go with that because it'll start leaking out and I want it to be at about like an inch worth so that I create a pretty good hole. If you have a star tip at home, okay, like a large uh, piping star tip, you can use that, which is actually what they use for churros. Um, I don't have one at home here. I have one at the school, which I should probably show the broad. Most of you guys probably don't have one. You can still pipe them um, just using a hole, okay? They're just kind of gonna look like nuggets um, and that's fine, okay? Um, if you really are concerned about it being fancy, I know that you can get star tips from like the dollar store and stuff like that. Um, what you would do is you would put the star tip into the bag um, and then you would cut this so that it's about like halfway down the star tip and then you would just um, pinch and squeeze it out just like I'm doing, okay? All right, so we are starting to get a few bubbles and the way that you can tell um, that oil is ready typically is that it will start to bubble all over, okay? During this time, you wanna make sure that your hands are not over top because as it starts to heat up, what these bubbles will do is they'll burst and they'll actually spit out, okay? Um, so I do want to make sure that I am a good distance away when I actually start to cook and the oil has something to kind of focus on, it won't spit as much. Okay. So during this time, if you've got kids and stuff like that, please make sure that all of your handles are in, um, no one's in front of your stovetop, like pets and stuff like that, because you wouldn't want any of them to get injured by, uh, so it is starting to bubble a little bit more. And again, I do want it to be an even heat. Um, much of the key to having a good fry is having even heat throughout. A lot of people will say that it needs to get up to like 350 degrees. Um, if you've got like a candy thermometer, technically you could use that to measure, but I don't. And typically I just wait until it gets to a good bubble. I test a piece uh, and then take a look, okay? If it starts to smoke, you have issues, okay? So I want to avoid that. So if it starts to smell, okay, and my oil starts to get brown, that's a pretty good telltale sign that I burnt my oil. And again, I'm just going to let it sit, okay? You don't need to stir it. You want to let it heat throughout. If you're very sensitive to smell or your family is, you're definitely going to want to air out after this because your entire house will smell like that, which isn't a bad thing, but some people really don't like it. Oh, it's starting to make noises. Okay, hang on. So I'm going to get my utility scissors and my kitchen scissors, which I will be using as well. starting to spit. So again, I'm going to keep my distance during this time until I know that it's all heated. Okay. I'm starting to get bigger bubbles, which is what I want to see. I will test this. So I'm going to cut this and see if I can get a small amount. So if my dough starts to uh, cook right off the bat and it will uh, come up, okay, so it'll come up to the top, then I know my oil is ready. So this isn't quite going. It's starting. Oh, there it's starting to float. Okay. So I am definitely getting there. This is floating. I've got good bubbles around this tester piece. And I think I'm ready to roll. 
All right, so you're still gonna have some spitting until you get your first couple in there. So please, please, please watch, okay? So I am gonna keep my distance as I do this. I'm gonna go my first one and cut it. And again, I want it to start cooking. So that should start cooking right away. Let's see if I can move that. There we go. And what I'm looking for is for it to be golden brown before I turn it. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna start with five and I can hear it and it's sizzling and a lot of my spitting has stopped, which is what I want. And I'm still at medium heat, okay? So I'm not gonna turn it for probably about one to three minutes, because again, I want it to cook. If I find that it's browning really, really fast, I'm definitely gonna turn down. But you'll see that a lot of the spitting has stopped, okay? I've got my bubbles, I've got my oil, they're all focused on my five churros there. And it's again, only halfway up, okay? I'm not fully covering my item because I'm not fully deep frying, all right? We are just frying on a stove top. If you got a deep fryer at home, go for it. You can definitely do those in there. And I get, I'm getting that good frying smell too. So during this entire time, I'm by my stove top, okay? I am not going anywhere else. I've got my dough in my hand. You could put it, probably put it down on another plate if you wanted to, um, but I'm just gonna keep it in my hand. Got my tongs ready to roll. And I'm gonna start taking a look. So when I flip this, okay, what I'm looking for is it to be golden brown. That's slightly brown, it's not quite cooked there. I'm gonna leave those other ones. And if you'll see some steam coming off, it's fine, okay? It's uh, like the smoke, like you can smell the difference that I wanna watch for. And I'm using a slotted spoon because it'll allow the oil to go through, which is what I want. I am just using vegetable oil. I guess if you wanted to do like canola oil, you could. Um, I haven't actually done these in like avocado oil or olive oil, um, only because I find that they don't fry the same, and it's, they're super expensive, so I don't typically test in those because you do need um, like a cup and a half or 375 milliliters of um, oil. So this golden brown right here, that's what I'm looking for, okay? Um, and again, I want it to be crispy on the outside. I want it to be cooked in the middle, not dough in the middle. And I'm not gonna put any more, even though I have lots of space. I wanna be able to handle these ones that I have first, be able to know what it's like to do the dipping, to do the padding, how long all of that takes before I add more, okay? And if you've got your oil on medium, you should be okay. You should not be burning your oil. It shouldn't be like, you, yeah, shouldn't be any fire alarms going off or smoke detectors or anything like that, okay? And again, you'll tell all of my spinning has stopped, okay? So it's just that beginning part that you really need to watch, all right, especially as you're putting your tester in, um, just really watch your arms and your hands and all of that good stuff. In the future, I mean, the other option with this is that you could actually do like a donut shape too. And you could like, basically this is how you fry donuts too. Okay. So once you've kind of figured out how to do stove top frying, it's an entire world that opens up to you. All right. So I am going to flip some of these. I'm starting to get a really good golden brown color, which is what I want. That one's still a little bit too light on that side. And I'm not gonna turn them over and over and over again. I do want them to sit and fry, okay? I'm gonna get my baby to sleep out. And it's making just the best smell. I love fried food. 
So yours might rise up a little bit more again. Mine is gluten-free flour. Okay, so if yours look different than this, that's why. All right, so I'm going to take a look at this one. This one's pretty much cooked. So is that one. So I'll probably give it about 15 seconds more, and then I'm going to take them out. These are almost done too. I am gonna do like batches at a time. Um, I find it's much easier when I'm dipping and, and kind of just watching my stove, okay? So even though I've got this one out already, I'm gonna wait until all of these come out and then I'm gonna do all of my dipping stuff. Smells so good. So inside your churro, what you're actually going to be looking for is almost like pockets, okay? So it shouldn't just be like do 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 do. You should have air pockets that would have formed with the baking. Let's see if I can get a good example of this when I show you guys the inside. All right. I'm just going to finish that one off. So I am then going to take my paper towel, I'm going to pat it down, I'm going to switch this over, I'm going to grab my tongs and I'm going to coat all of this stuff in lovely cinnamon sugar. And you should be able to do several at a time and you can even kind of toss this about too. And you don't want to dab it too much with the paper towel because you do want some of that oil to soak up um, or to stay on the item so that you get a good coating of cinnamon sugar. got those. I'm going to break into that, but before I break into that, I'm going to start off my next batch. So I'm doing five at a time. I'll get that six there. And I am going to turn it down slightly, okay? But as far as my churros goes, Let's take a look at these, shall we? Okay, so you see I have these air pockets in here. That's what I want. I also want this to be fully cooked, which it is. Okay, so if this is a different color, if this is like super dark, okay, that's not a good sign. That means that your dough is raw. But I do want it, this is fully cooked. It's pretty hot. Mmm, delicious. I would allow them to stay for just a little bit because that one was really hot. Um, but served warm, they're so good. With ice cream, they're so good. Dip them into caramel sauce, so good. You can even brown some bananas and put them over top or strawberries or whatever. Awesome recipe. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Stay cooking.